This is episode number two of Windows 365 Masterclass. In this episode, we are going to dive deep into the technical aspects of Windows 365. I have divided this episode into four different sections. The first one we will go through as an admin, how you can make some decisions on who to assign, how to assign, where to create policies, what are the three different types of architectural options available. I will help you understand uh, what are the considerations and what are the benefits of each architectural type, etc. The next part will include the user settings. How can you configure the restore points? How to configure if a user has to be an admin user or a standard user in a cloud PC? What are the other security baselines policies you can apply on top of a cloud PC? So we will look into that on part two. Part three is all about the user experience. As a user, how do you access it? What are the different apps or a browser options available for a user? And the last part will include how you can deprovision a cloud PC. How can you reset a cloud PC? How can you reassign the license and give the cloud PC to a different user? And we will look into what is grace period and how can end a grace period, etc. So I hope you enjoy this. Let's begin. All right, so let's start with part one. So before a user can use a cloud PC as an administrator, the first step is to assign the right licenses to a user. There are a couple of ways you can do it. Either you can go to your Microsoft Intune portal by going into endpoint.microsoft.com or you can go to your Microsoft 365 admin portal. That's by going into admin.microsoft.com or you could go to your Azure portal as well. So within Azure portal, you can go to your Azure AD or now there is another way you can go to Entra portal as well. So there are various places you can go and assign a user license. So I'm going to stick with Microsoft Intune because that's the portal we are going to use mostly for the whole demonstration. Go to a user. So on the left hand side, on this curtain, you would be able to find a user tab. So click on it. This is where you would be able to see all the users part of your tenant. So to assign a license directly to a user, very simple process. Pick a user who you want to assign the license to. On the left hand side, under manage, you can see licenses. So click on that. This is where you would be able to see all the available licenses or assigned licenses for this particular user. Click on assignments. Within that, you can see the list of available licenses. So towards the bottom, you can see that if you have available Windows 365 licenses, you basically select this checkbox or on the left hand side, you can check this box as well. So when you select this, this says that this user is assigned with a cloud PC. The configuration of that is 2 CPU, 8 GB RAM and 128 GB hard disk. So that's how you select it and you save that user. That's one way of assigning the license. Another way is group assignment. So let's go to group. This is actually the easiest way to assign a license. Create a new group. Just keep it a security group. I'm going to call this group as Windows 365 user group. I'm going to put the same as the description as well. If you want to add Azure AD roles, you can select yes. It's not mandatory for us. The membership type, I'm going to keep it assigned for now and create it. And let's do a refresh and find the group we created just now. All right. So the group we created just now is Windows 365 user group. Let's go to members. You can see that we have not added any member here. So to assign licenses to this particular group again like the user on the left hand side under manage there is a licensing tab click on assignments and select this license and save it so anytime you add a new user to this particular group that user will automatically get the license so you don't have to individually add licenses to the user so go to membership um, and uh, find a user and select the user and add that user. This user will automatically get the license. 
after you assign the license the next step is to go and provision these policies required for windows 365 for that we have to go to microsoft intune portal on the microsoft intune portal first step is to go to devices and under devices you would be able to see cloud pc creation or if your intune is being not upgraded to the latest one you would see a windows 365 tab under devices so click on cloud pc creation this is where you would be able to find all the policies required for windows 365 so we can begin with user settings and we can go uh, forward um, so let's start with azure network connection first so the reason for having this azure network connection here is this will allow your cloud pcs to be stand up within your own virtual network which you manage within your azure so if you don't want cloud pcs to be stand up in microsoft network this is where you will have a connection created which will allow you to have your cloud pcs stand up within your network there are two options available one is to have an azure ad joined cloud pc within your network or a hybrid azure ad join cloud pc within your um, network so these are all completely optional steps if you don't want your cloud pcs within your network or within your azure network you don't have to do this configuration all right so let me quickly show you how you can do this configuration if you want to do an azure ad join select azure ad join i'm going to call it azure network windows 365 azure ad join the join type as azure ad join subscription um, you need to have access to your subscription when you sign in to your Intune portal, if this particular user doesn't have access to your Azure subscription, you will not be able to pick your Azure subscription here. So for that, you can always go and give a contributor access to this particular account so that you can perform this activity. So select the resource group. And uh, within that, you need to uh, create a resource group or you can select an existing one so i'm going to select an existing one the next step is you need to select a network this is where you can go to your azure subscription and create a network or if you if you already have you can select an existing network so to give you a quick idea so you can go under azure click on virtual networks click on create a new virtual network and I'm just gonna randomly um, create one give a name click next basically your network will include an IP address range and a subnet that's all you need so once you have that you can stand up your cloud PCs within your virtual network so since I already have one if I go to my virtual network I have a VNet created cm lab vnet so i'm going to leverage that for my intune so select that and within that i do have a subnet which is a default subnet and click next so that's how you create your azure ad joined vnet so once you have the vnet it's easy for you to select when you create uh, the provisioning policies the next one is hybrid azure ad join so this is little different to uh, the Azure AD join one. This network need to have a line of sight to your on-prem domain controller. So hybrid Azure AD join means you need to join your cloud PCs or you want to join your cloud PCs to your on-prem domain controller. To do that, your network need to have access to your on-prem uh, domain controller there are a couple of ways you can do it one you could have a site-to-site -site connectivity from your azure environment to your on-prem network or you can have an express route connectivity to your on-premises network i'm going to call it as azure network windows 365 hybrid azure ready join again select your azure subscription resource group um, select the vnet and select the subnet 
One other difference compared to the Azure AD join one to this hybrid Azure AD join is you need to provide your domain name, OU name, username and password which have access to join these cloud PCs to the domain. My domain is agtclab.com. If you, if I want this cloud PC to be part of a specific OU, I need to provide the OU details here in a specific format. So as you can see over here, this is the format. I'm gonna leave that, this is not a mandatory field. Next is to provide the username and password. This is a mandatory field. So go ahead and provide the right username which have access to your on-prem domain controller and the password and click next and you have your hybrid Azure ready join policy ready. So let's go back to the policy. You can see that I have already created both for my configuration. Both of my policies have some sort of an error. One, um, I kind of know about it because my domain controller is turned off because I don't use the hybrid Azure ready join. I only used it for testing. Process what we are gonna do today is to go through the Microsoft hosted network. But I kind of showed you how to create a hybrid Azure AD join connection. So you can see that my um, Azure AD device sync is not happened because my server is uh, in a turned off status. All right, so once you have this in place, the next step is to create a provisioning policy. For that, we go to provisioning policies. So in my uh, console, you can see that there is already one provisioning policy available, but let's go ahead and create a brand new one. Ideally, you will only have one or two provisioning policies within your whole tenant. You will not have more than two. So let's start with giving a name. I'm gonna call it as Windows 365 provisioning policy. Under license type, there are two types of licenses. One is an enterprise one. So that's what we are gonna use now. We will talk about the frontline in the future videos. Just to give you an idea, frontline licenses will give you an ability to use one cloud PC license for three users. So this is mostly for frontline staff or shift workers. So we will talk about it, we'll configure it at the later stage. Let's focus on enterprise now. After selecting the license type, there are two ways you can join your cloud PCs. One, you can join it to Azure AD join or hybrid Azure AD join. Again, the differences are very simple. One, Azure AD join will allow you to join your cloud PCs to your Azure AD. Hybrid Azure AD join will allow your cloud PCs to join to your on-prem domain controller. So that's the only difference. When you select hybrid Azure AD join, it will ask you to select the network. You remember, this is the reason we have to create the Azure network before this step. For Azure AD join, you don't have to worry about it. So we will select Azure AD join because that's where we want our cloud PCs. The next one is, do you want to host this network in the Microsoft hosted network or do you want to host this in an Azure network, which is your own network. So if you choose Microsoft hosted network, all you have to do is select the geography where you want to host it. In my case, I want to host it in Australia. Um, if you have multiple regions within that geography, you can choose it. So in my case, I only have Windows 365 available in Australia East, so I choose that. So it's very simple, straightforward. This is the recommended approach because you don't have to worry about any other complicated configuration, things like that. But if you do want to host it in your own network, um, again, you select Azure Network Connection. And within that, you select the Azure Network Connection uh, within your Azure subscription. Previous step, what we have done, you need to go ahead and create your network first. Once you do that, you would be able to select the network here. So I'm gonna select Azure Hosted, pick a region where you wanna host it. The next, we do have a preview feature right now, which 
will allow the cloud PCs to use single sign-on. So if you want your cloud PCs to automatically sign in to uh, from your PC to your cloud PC, then you can select it. Otherwise, just ignore it. Click next. Here we have an option to select the operating system by default. Um, I would encourage or recommend anybody who are studying this to choose in a gallery image because there are a couple of good reasons for that one. Uh, Microsoft will manage this. Microsoft will make sure that it is always up to date and uh, updated with the patches, things like that. And it does come with the Microsoft 365 apps as well. So you don't have to go and deploy Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook and all the productivity app which is needed for a user after the deployment. So it is already comes with it. Second, these operating systems are optimized for Windows 365 or VDI. So it's again, why won't you use an optimized version for Windows 365 rather than your own one? So you pick an operating system. It's either Windows 10 or Windows 11. Select it. Another option is you can have your own um, custom image. So let's let me go back come back again instead of gallery image you can select custom image so custom image will allow you to use your own operating system so all you have to do is create an image sysprep it upload that image uh, to uh, your azure blob storage and then you would be able to use it we will i will create another video talking about it but I'm, i don't want to like create um, on this one because the length of the video will be super long so we will look into that on a separate video so let's select gallery image select an image and click next so we we created a couple of settings and the third setting is configuration by default uh, cloud pc naming will be cpc and dash username if you do want to have your own template you can provide your own template so this is the existing template if you don't have if you don't provide a template this is how the cloud pc naming would be so i'm going to use the default one and the next is how do you want to um, update your patches uh, within your cloud pc if you don't want to use auto patch you can select none and you can use your existing patch deployment to select the patches if you do want to use auto patch uh, you can select auto patch i will create a separate video on what is auto patch and how we can configure it um, and on later but to give you an idea what is auto patch auto patch will allow microsoft to patch your cloud pcs not just windows operating system you can use that to patch your office applications um, your Microsoft Edge and things like that. So we will do the patching for you. You don't have to worry about it. You can just control and create the policies which is required. And going forward, we will be automatically patching that for you. So don't worry about it. Again, we will. I will create a separate video for that in the future. Click next. Again, this is another important step. Once you create all these, all you have to do is select the group where you want to deploy it. You remember we created a Windows 365 user group. So make sure you have users um, part of that group. Click select the user group. Click next. Review it. As you can see that we created a provisioning policy. The type of the license is enterprise license, not the front line. We choose the join type as Azure AD join and we, we want to host this cloud PC in um, Australia, Australia East. The image is the gallery image. We are not using the custom image. And we chose Windows 11 without any apps. You have another option to choose with apps as well. Language, English. And uh, we selected a group called Windows 365 user group, which we created just before this provisioning policy. And click on create. So that's pretty much it. Um, you will have, you already have a provisioning policy ready. If you have a user assigned to that particular group, you will immediately see your cloud PC is being provisioned automatically for you. You can check that status by going into overview. 
you can see that um, if if this cloud PC is been under provisioning, if it is failed for you or is it automatically provisioned? So in my case, it's it's provisioned. Um, if you want to check the status of failed one, you can see that I have a couple of network failures. Um, like I said, the reason for that failure is because um, I have turned off my uh, domain controller. That's the reason for the failure. If you want to see the cloud PC, uh, click on all cloud PCs. I do have one cloud PC available for a user. It used a provisioning policy naming convention, which I told if you don't give a custom template, by default, Cloud PC naming will be CPC dash username dash a random number. If you scroll down to the right, you can see the type of Cloud PC. It used a provisioning policy like this. Uh, the image what is used is Windows 11 Enterprise. We didn't use any Azure network connection, so that's why it is blank. You can see the type of the Cloud PC I used. Um, the license queue 2 vCPU 8 GB RAM 128 GB hard disk. So that's why it is showing the type as that. The status of the cloud PC is provisioned and which user it is assigned to. You can see that it is assigned to a user and when is it last modified. It's very straightforward. As an administrator, you can do certain um, admin related tasks for this cloud PC. You can restart the cloud PC. You can restore the cloud PC. If you as an admin want to restore it on behalf of a user, you can do that. You can reprovision the cloud PC. When you do that, it will automatically lock the user off and it will create a new instance. Um, and when you do that, all the restore points for this cloud PC will be lost. So for whatever reason, if you want to reprovision it, you can do that. The next is you can resize it. Let's assume you have different SKUs available within your tenant and for whatever reason you want to resize this cloud PC, you can resize to a higher SKU or you can resize to a lower SKU as well. As long as you have the license available within your tenant. When you do that, the cloud PC will restart and it will um, give that particular cloud PC a newer instance with the appropriate SKU you selected. You can download and collect the diagnostics. If you want to quickly scan uh, the Microsoft Defender scan, you can do that. Or um, you can do uh, put the place, the cloud PC under review and things like that. So we will come to that uh, later. We have seen how to set up a new user, how to assign a license. We discussed about the different network connection options. We created the provisioning policies. We discussed the three architectural type. We created the cloud PC provisioning. We haven't discussed the three different architectural type. Let me quickly do that. I'm going to go to the study guide. You can access this study guide by going into my blog. Within that, under architecture, I have laid down three different architecture. Let's discuss the first architecture. The first architecture is option one, which is Microsoft hosted network. In this scenario, we are joining your cloud PC to Azure AD join. When you use this option, your cloud PC is deployed within a Microsoft subscription and user will get that 1.5 to 2 GB upload and download speed. You can again use Azure AD for your identity. You can use your Microsoft Intune to manage your cloud PC. The only difference is it is hosted in Microsoft network. So let's quickly go to some of the benefits this is the very straightforward configuration. You don't need any Azure subscription. All you need is the right licenses. You can easily start um, the deployment immediately. Have to pay for additional cost or network infrastructure. You don't need expertise for your Azure uh, networking. Um, like I said, no complexity whatsoever. Very easy to deploy. And when you do that, it is aligned to your zero trust model. Uh, and because it is hosted in Microsoft Network, it has very high speed uh, as well. Another uh, benefit is it is aligned to the SaaS model because Windows 365 is a SaaS-based solution. So when you choose uh, the option one, it adhere to the SaaS model. What are the other considerations you, when you use the option one, which is Azure AD join, it straight away says that it doesn't have any connectivity to your on-prem domain controller. 
So no access to your on-prem resources, no direct access, which is very important. Because if you do want to give access, there is another option. All you have to do is install your VPN client and that exposes that cloud PC to access any resources what you want that cloud PCs to access. Uh, to access internal resources, like I said, you can install a VPN or private access that gives them an ability to connect to on-prem. The other things are not that uh, important, so you can always go and read about it. Uh, what I would recommend is if you are planning to stand up Cloud PC for your organization, try to use option one. If for whatever reason it is not possible, look at option two and option three. But again, um, bring that architectural to option one as soon as possible after mitigating the problems whatever you may have let's look at option two option two the only difference here is uh, we can talk about option two uh, and option three parallel both option two and option three need to have on-prem uh, connectivity um, option two is you're hosting your cloud pc in your own network or the network access is in your network but you are using Azure AD join. Option three, again, you are choosing the network connectivity within your own Azure network, but you are connecting to your on-premises domain controller for joining the cloud PC. That's the only difference. So both need Azure network, both need, um, you need to have your subnet ready. One is gonna join to your Azure AD, another one is gonna be joined to your hybrid um, domain controller. What are the benefit? You get complete control on your VNet. Uh, one key benefit why everybody go with this option is you have direct line of sight to your on-premises infrastructure. As long as you have a site-to-site -site or a VPN connectivity within your Azure environment, you can have a line of sight to your on-premises domain controller. Why some customers prefer to use this? The reason being they want to have line of sight connectivity to your on-prem domain controller and they want access to their on-premises legacy applications that's the reason customers would go for it what are the considerations you definitely need an azure subscription you need an expertise to manage your network uh, it does bring in a lot of complexity in terms of deployment uh, the duration of the deployment is longer because the first model, you can deploy your cloud PC within 10 to 15 minutes. This would take up to an hour, sometimes even more than that, whenever you try to deploy a new cloud PCs. And it has a lot of uh, risk as well in terms of failure, right? So these are the three different um, network options available. Now let's look into uh, the other user settings part, how you can decide whether the user has to be a local admin or an administrator or like a standard user what are the restore options available how you can assign that policy um, to a user things like that so within your intune portal go back to um, cloud pcs again the cloud pcs can be found under devices click on devices within that under device onboarding click on cloud pc the policy what we are going to see now is called user settings so you can click on user settings. Under that, click on add. Just give a name for the user policy. And I'm gonna name this as admin. I'll tell you why. So there are two ways you can give permission to the Cloud PC. One, you can just leave as default. Default is everybody's a standard user within your Cloud PC. But for whatever reason, you want to give admin privileges to the user, whether it be the developer or an admin user, um, you can create a policy and you can select enable local admin and click next and assign to a group of user who you want this admin privileges to. So we created a Windows 365 user group, select that group and any user who is part of this group, if they have a license and a provisioning policy assigned, they will be a local administrator on that particular cloud PC. Very simple, straightforward. Another one is standard user. So you can leave it at default. If you don't create any policy, that user is gonna be a standard user. So that's very simple, straightforward. The next is restore policies. You can club this together with the user setting or you can create a brand new policy. So I'm gonna create a Windows 365 restore policy. Here, by default, 
the restore policies are not enabled for the user. So you, you can allow the user to initiate the restore for the user. When you allow it, user will be able to restore the backup or snapshot of their cloud PCs all by themselves. By default, there are few snapshots available. If you don't choose one, it is going to default into 12 hours. You can choose either to go with 4 hours, um, 6, 12, 16, or 24. When you do that, every 4 hours, Microsoft is going to take a snapshot of your cloud PC. It is all part of the cost. There is no additional cost for taking this snapshot or the number of snapshot you take or retain it. Uh, Microsoft is going to take 10 snapshot every four hours or any configuration you choose and another four more weekly. So in total, there are going to be 14 restore points. So select that, click next. Again, select a user group. Select the user group where you want this resource restore policies to be applied and click next. And that's about it. So that's the two settings you will probably have one. Um, to choose whether the user need to be admin or a standard user and you select that the next one is the policy which will allow the user to restore it now let's look from the user point of view while i do that i can show you both of this as well so we'll go to part three while going through the browser and the app experience i can quickly show you how the user can restore their cloud pc let us first use a browser to access Windows 365 Cloud PC. To go to the Cloud PC portal, type in windows365.microsoft.com and provide your Office 365 username and password. I assigned the user license to this particular user. So I'm going to sign in, provide the right password and click on sign in. All right, so now you can see that this user have two Cloud PCs assigned. So let me quickly expand the size. So cloud PCs are shown as these cards. And these cards will have certain information like what type of operating system assigned to this user, uh, what's the configuration like. So if you notice, this particular cloud PC have 4 vCPU, 16 GB RAM, and 128 GB hard disk. This particular cloud PC have 2 vCPU, 8 GB RAM, and 128 GB hard disk. So that's the main configuration. So extra bit of CPU and extra bit of RAM. Apart from that, both are assigned with the uh, same configuration. You as a user can do certain tasks within the browser. One, you can restart the cloud PC, restore it, rename it, troubleshoot, and uh, you can look into system information. So when you restart, it's saying that the cloud PC is active at the moment. Any unsaved data you might have on your cloud PC will be lost. Um, if you accept this warning message, you can click on restart. Because it's a one-to-one -one mapping, you don't have to restart your cloud PC or shut down your cloud PC to save cost. You can let it run all the time. Um, the idea of that is if you are working on something, if you finish your work, you can just close your browser and when you log in back the next time you can restart from where you left off which is which is great um, another thing what you can do is you can rename it so let me quickly go and rename this cloud pc i'm going to call it as jump host cloud pc so i know that before this particular user sign in this user can um, understand which cloud pc it is and i'm going to name this as a developer pc or whatever uh, another thing what you can do is restore. So restore is nothing but like I mentioned before, when you create the policy, you can create, uh, you can allow a cloud PC to have a snapshot capability. So if you look at it every four hours, there is a snapshot taken. So if I as a user want to go back into a known state before, I can select that and click on restore. That is going to restore this point back to that particular time. Again, click on restore. It is restoring the cloud PC to that known state. While that is happening, let me quickly rename this cloud PC. I'm going to call this cloud PC as development cloud PC. Again, if you look at restore, uh, you might find restore points for this cloud PC as well. What else can I do? We can troubleshoot it. 
So when you troubleshoot it, it tells you messages like, do you need resources to be connected for working properly or Windows 365 services are online and available and any other connectivity issues, things like that. So click on start. This go and uh, troubleshoot the connection for that particular cloud PC. You can see that the other cloud PC is in the restoring mode and uh, another cloud PC in the troubleshooting mode. So if you look at the development PC where we have requested for connectivity troubleshooting, it returned the value as there is no issues detected on this cloud PC. While the other PC is still restoring, what I can do is I can let you know how you can connect to your cloud PC. To connect to cloud PC, click on open in a browser. You will get this particular prompt before trying to connect. So if you as a user don't want to have connectivity to your local printer, microphone, clipboard, etc., you can disable it. Otherwise, you can just leave it at uh, default. As an administrator, you have settings available to go and uh, customize this option as well. So click on connect, provide your password and sign in. All right, so now my cloud PC is been signing in for the first time. So if you have a high resolution display, you can enable this to get high DPI. And if you want to enter your cloud PC into full screen, you can do that as well. So in, in that particular state, you would feel like this is the only PC what you are using. So I'm going to quickly go back, exit out of the full screen mode. All right. So now I logged into my cloud PC for the first time. Just like any other Windows PC, there is no latency. If you want to quickly check the speed, what I am getting within this cloud PC. Let's quickly go and test the speed. Because this is hosted in Australia, I'm going to go to Telstra to do a quick speed test. Click on OK. Uh, we should get around 1.5 to 2. Wow, um, we are getting more than 2. Oh, this is this is amazing. So we get more than 2.6 and 2.1 gigabits upload and download speeds. So this is what I said. If possible, recommended approach is to use Microsoft hosted network so that you can utilize this speed benefit what you can get within the Microsoft platform. And uh, once you are within your cloud PC, you can basically use the cloud PC like your regular PC. So let me quickly go to system information and show you what's the capacity or the configuration of this machine. So you can see it's 16 GB RAM. It's installed with Windows 11 Enterprise. I have all the apps which is pre-installed for me like Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. So let me quickly open my Outlook. When I launch it, it will automatically or it should uh, automatically configure it for me by default. Yep, uh, the email has been configured for me. I didn't have to do anything. Um, if my admin deploy any application for this particular user, it auto I will automatically get it. So it's pretty straightforward from here. Uh, what are the other things you can do? I can give feedback. Um, you can check the connection quality. You can see more details. What's the round trip time, uh, the bandwidth available, things like that. Um, you can expand it to full screen or you can shrink it. If you want to upload any files to your cloud PC from your local PC, you can do that. And under settings, you can see the keyboard shortcuts if you want to capture log for what. So that's the browser experience. If I go back to the card, the other thing what you can do is you can download the app specific for the platform what you're using. So right now I'm using my Mac for recording this video. So let me quickly go to the Mac App Store to download the remote desktop client before we look into the Windows one. So go to the App Store. Let's open it and download and open the remote desktop app. Cool. So this is the app which you can use to connect to your cloud PC. So to get the subscription URL, uh, you can click on this link. This gets you the subscription URL to connect to your app. Let's copy it. Go back to the app and click on add workspace and paste your URL here and click on add. And 
all you have to do is provide the username and password click next provide the password and for the first time the workspace will go and find all the available cloud pcs for you within this uh, app so you can see that now i can i have two cloud pcs one with two vcpu and one with four vcpu if i want to connect all i have to do is just double tap um, it should automatically sign in for me click on continue and this app is really good if you have multiple monitor so as you can see that i just exited out of the browser and i just use the app all the open window i had in the other uh, browser instance it's all there for me this is what i just said before so this cloud pc is running for you all the time um, when you close the session and when you restart it again from whatever device whatever platform whatever app you use you can go back to the same instance where you actually left it off so that's really good so that's the uh, experience from the app so i'm gonna exit out of it um, and uh, let me show you quickly how you can access from a windows platform i'm gonna log in as the user no thanks and again Within Windows, you can use it in a browser or you could simply go to the download button and go to the store, open the store. Within the Windows platform, you can download this app. This app is available for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. So just download it and click on open it. So let me minimize the other windows. So once you open it, you can see that this user have again two cloud PCs this is the app experience it's much more cleaner bit more neat than the browser experience again if you have multiple monitor i would recommend you to use this app so from there if you want to connect all you have to do is click on tap to connect and that will automatically launch and you will be able to connect to your windows cloud pc all right so that's the app and browser experience in the last part of the demo, we are going to learn about how can you resize a cloud PC, unassign the license, what is this grace period, how can you end a grace period, what is placing a cloud PC under review, things like that. So let's go and find out how. To perform all this activity, we are going to go to Intune portal. So go to endpoint.microsoft.com, log in with your admin credentials, sign in. The first thing what we are going to learn is how can you resize a cloud PC. So let's go to users, click on all users, pick a user. So within that, check if this user is assigned with a license. Click on assignments. You can see that this user is already assigned with a 4V CPU, 16 GB RAM, 128 GB hard disk cloud PC. So I'm gonna quickly open another portal. So in this portal, I'm gonna go to devices. All the Windows 365 activities are under device onboarding cloud PC. Under Cloud PC, click on All Cloud PCs, and you can see that there are two Cloud PCs assigned to one user, and one is not provisioned. You can click on that detail and see what's the reason for it. It says that the Cloud PC is not provisioned because this user have an assigned license, but not part of a provisioning policy. To make this user part of the provisioning policy, all we have to do is go to Provisioning Policy. Click on the provisioning policy. Understand which group this user is part of. It's called Windows 365 user group and add that user to the group. That's simple it is. Now, to reprovision um, or resize the cloud PC, select the cloud PC first. And on top, you would see all the admin activities like restart, sync, reprovision, resize, things like that. So to resize, simply click on the resize, select the type of SKU you want this cloud PC to be. Currently the SKU is for vCPU 16 GB RAM. You can resize to either a lower SKU or a higher SKU, provided you need to have the right licenses. Once you have the right license, then you would be able to do that activity. So I don't have any lower and higher SKU, but I do have a couple of extra licenses for this. So let me quickly show you from another cloud pc so this particular cloud pc is a 2 vcpu model click on resize so you can see that this is a 2 vcpu model and i can resize to a 4 vcpu model 
click on resize this will go and automatically provision that cloud pc for me so that's how you resize it the next one is how do you unassign the windows 365 license very simple you go back to where you have assigned the license for a user uncheck it click on save that will unassign the license for a user so you don't so that user won't have rights to use a cloud pc the next one is seven day grace period when you deprovision or unassign a license to a user by default microsoft will put the cloud pc under review for seven days you can end the grace period to free up the license so you simply go to the portal and you say that i want to end the grace period so i don't have any unassigned um, example right now but in the future videos when i do that i will make sure i create a small video on that now let's look into cloud pc review let's go to a cloud pc on the top admin bar click on this ellipsis you can see that there is an option to place your cloud pc under review so why would you use that so for whatever reason you want to place this cloud pc for an audit um, either it could be a virus attack or or if that employee is leaving you want to keep the cloud pc in an audit purpose for some e-discovery purposes you can select the subscription where you want to place it under review uh, select the storage account and uh, you can place this cloud pc under review there are two ways you can do it one while under review you can completely block access to the cloud pc or you can allow access as well so under allow access the cloud pc will be under review but user will be still be able to access it so that's how you place the cloud pc under review and the last is how do you deprovision or reprovision it so when you do reprovision it will kick that user out of the session and it will start the cloud pc with a new instance so when you do that all the restore points will be removed all this unsaved data for that user will be removed if you want to go back in time all you have to do is instead of reprovision you do restore reprovision will give you a new instance uh, but restore can get back in time to it um, earlier snapshot or a earlier uh, backup point so that's the end of episode 2 of this windows 365 masterclass in the next episode i am planning to create a video on how to create a custom image as part of your windows 365 provisioning so i will see you on the next one until then take care